In one of my latest videos, I talked to you about Devin, the new AI coder. We're not going to talk about it again in this video, uh, but I will leave that video linked in one of the cards that should appear on your screen right now, just in case you want to check it out. But in this video, we're going to explore what's happening in the AI space. By this time, you probably know that agents are taking over. There's a whole explosion of agents. These new AI tools that can complete entire jobs on their own, that go back and forth using different tools to work on different tasks. This is becoming a big deal. And it's becoming a big deal faster than you might think. In this video, I'll explore exactly what's going on. I'll show you what's likely to happen in the next three to four months. And at the end of the video, we'll discuss what steps you should probably be taking right now to prepare for that. So really quickly, this is Ethan Mollick, a professor studying AI, and he's written this book called Cointelligence. I'm not too sure why its cover is literally somebody picking a fruit. This reminds me of the forbidden fruit, but nonetheless, this is sort of a book about living and working with AI. Or Obviously, these would be AI agents. Now, this is his reaction to Devin. So he says the thing that makes Devin really interesting is the new modality of interaction. You can talk to it anytime like you would a person and it just keeps chugging away in the background, executing and debugging your ideas. Now, a few people have started getting access to Devin. Access has been slowly rolling out. I haven't got access to it, although I am on the waiting list. But one really cool thing about it is that while it works on your task, while it executes on what it's doing in the background, you can always talk to it. And as you can see, in these videos, talking to it doesn't actually pause it. And this is something that's not yet possible on pretty much any of the LLMs that we have right now. But this fits the agent framework really, really well. And I just want to mention the agent framework is the next step of AI. We're not yet at the step where we're going to start seeing AGI roll out to everybody. Now, I do believe that some companies have their hands on AGI. Maybe OpenAI does, probably Meta as well. But it's not yet safe enough to actually start releasing it. What we are going to see and what the next step of artificial intelligence is going to be is going to be these new autonomous agents. So these new systems that are designed to execute and refine their systems and are capable of sensing what's going on in their environment and step by step execute on these tasks that we initially thought humans were required to do. This reflects really, really well in a recent interview where Sam Altman said that the AI systems we're going to see going forward are not going to be these one-step systems that just produce a series of text in response to a single question. They're going to be these systems that you give a job, you tell them to do something and they go back and they think about it and they execute on it step by step and they solve the problem that you've given them step by step over a long period of time sort of like human beings do and that's exactly what's going to happen in 2024 over the next three to four months is a lot of these systems are going to roll out and they're going to be executing on these jobs that initially we thought that at this point we can only solve with human intelligence they're going to be doing these jobs step by step and executing on them over a longer period of time now really really quickly if you're enjoying this video on this channel we post timely really quick AI updates that get you in check with everything that you need to know on a daily basis in as short a period of time as possible. And if you're up to that, please be sure to go ahead and leave me a sub. It really, really helps me out and I'd massively appreciate it. So let's go ahead and continue. As Malik is pointing over here, so the really cool thing with these new agent systems is that you can sort of tell them halfway through, say, oh, you're doing this. I don't think that's the right idea. Go back to the planner, figure this out. And the system can go back and refine itself to better match exactly what you want. But you sort of coming in and stopping it halfway telling it to change its task that's not going to completely stop the execution like we do in the current systems instead it's just going to help the model be more effective at the job that it's doing now it certainly looks like at the moment devin is sort of the only real agent solution that has been released but i'd like to bring your attention to misa so misa recently talked about introducing their misa kpu the next leap in ai reasoning capabilities where they sort of modify gpt4 to enhance its reasoning capabilities and here they claim that they were able to achieve much better performance than pretty much all the most advanced models that we have at the moment. It certainly is the case that a bunch of vocal people in the comment section are not really reading well into this. A bunch of people are saying, well, this is not particularly new. We've already sort of seen these systems in the past. You're not doing anything that's new. But the point here is they've sort of deployed a new system that has better reasoning capabilities. And in this video that I'm showing you here, what this system is doing is it's taking in a complaint from a client, somebody that didn't write down their order correctly. What it does is it goes back into their system it sort of reads the email figures out exactly what the client's complaint is and it's planning step by step how it can help this client what it's doing now is that it's going back inside the list of orders that they have and it notices that the client's order is apparently marked as delivered although it hasn't actually been delivered that's why the client is complaining to begin with and then it's writing them an email sort of letting them know why their delivery wasn't made and it sort of prepares this email you can sort of see that it gives the client a compensation for the fact that they didn't get their 
products delivered on time it's just giving them a little bit of a coupon code and it's letting them know that it has corrected the error and that their product should be delivered in time now, of course this is not anything particularly new but for a system to be able to reason like this and figure out how to solve a problem like this step by step as you can see it's executing on this problem in a step-by-step -step manner and it's solving it one step at a time and then it goes ahead and prepares the email that's to be sent to the client and sends it to them this is definitely something that ChatGPT can do at the moment and yes there is some questions around the prompting technique that they use they claim that it's new it might not particularly be new but the point is this is sort of a framework that can be used to build a general agent system so an agent that can pretty much do anything and of course they do say over here that they're not yet allowing everybody to use MISA they're sort of slowly rolling out access to it and that's cool and all but as you can see there's a lot of these new agent systems that are sort of handling this task and the really cool thing about these agents is like MISA says over here they can really save a lot of money that's the thing that companies really really care about if they previously needed somebody that needs to be paid roughly $20 an hour to be able to do this now they can just deploy this onto an agent system it can do it in a much shorter period of time it can do it a lot better and a lot more predictably and it saves them money so that's the really really important thing the really cool thing about these systems is that it's not just the really big companies that are building them the tools that are required to build this stuff are available to pretty much everybody so you might be familiar with a content creator called AI Jason every once in a while he goes ahead and drops one of these videos where he practically shows off a project that he's working on and gives you a sort of step-by-step -step guide on how you can create that and one of his latest videos is this insanely fast AI called call agent which is basically a system this video is probably sponsored by Grok but it's basically a system that uses Grok's technology which is really really fast LLM inferencing to be able to act as a sort of sales representative so I'll go ahead and show you the really key parts of this video and you can sort of see how the technologies to build these systems are available to pretty much everybody it's not just a limited system that only some of the biggest companies can use pretty much anyone can begin to build these systems so as you can see the really cool thing about what he's showing off here is that the LLM is running in pretty much real time the rate at which it responds to his questions is pretty much the rate that you would expect any human called call agent to respond to particular questions that a client might ask now why this is really important is the fact that agents need to be able to do things really really quickly yes we do accept that they should take a little bit longer than traditional LLMs to be able to finish tasks just because they're working on a much better project best approach and that obviously will take time sort of like real humans do but the point is we need faster technologies to allow these systems to operate so this is where Grok comes into the picture so this is their website and basically they're saying well Grok is on a mission to set the standard for generative AI inference speed helping real-time AI applications come to life today and their technology basically is this LPU so a language processing unit it's a new system for running inference on large language models and it's a system that produces record-breaking speeds and pretty much sets the standard for how fast we can run inference on this system so this is sort of me running a side-by-side -side comparison between chat GPT 4 and Grok on their response speed now I'm not gonna go ahead and give them exactly the same time to finish I have started chat GPT before Grok but what you can sort of see is that Grok's response is much much longer than chat GPT's and yet they pretty much finished in exactly the same time so the point here is to sort of show that these new inference systems these systems that are coming out are gonna be a lot faster and what they're gonna do is they're gonna allow for these real-time agents that can basically talk to human beings in pretty much the same speed that human beings talk to each other now a lot of you must have seen the recent leaks we've had with GPT 4.5 apparently OpenAI accidentally indexed one of their web pages that were basically talking about GPT 4.5 Turbo and how it's gonna have better speed accuracy and scalability surpassing that of GPT 4 Turbo and it also says that the new model will have a knowledge cutoff of up to June 2024 to a lot of people this might suggest that the model is coming out in June 2024 but I really don't think this is gonna be the case I think this is something that we're gonna see a bit later on maybe something to see in July or a little bit later on in the year because as usual with OpenAI it's sort of often the case that they release these models and then they sort of give them a bit of time before they go ahead and release them but nonetheless the point is that this new GPT 4.5 model is going to be a lot better and one of the things that it's likely to do is it's likely to include an agent system or an agent framework that allows people to build agents for doing pretty much anything and that's exactly why I think agents are sort of going to be the future going forward so three to four months from now we're going to have hundreds of agents out in the market they're pretty much going to be doing exactly the same jobs that human beings have been doing and they're going to be getting faster and faster this kind of thing the question is what should you do well honestly it's pretty basic I do think we should all be working on agents right now of course there's multiple ways to do this but like I showed you pretty much all the technologies that allow us to build these agent systems 
platforms they're pretty much out there in the world it's not some technology that's hidden that only the biggest companies have access to pretty much anybody can start doing this now let me know what you think about this in the comment section let me know if you have any interesting agent projects that you're working on right now super eager to hear from you guys on exactly what you think and if this video has been insightful and you like my content be sure to leave me a sub as that really really does help me out and i will catch you in the next one peace out